Are you serious? So, Yo. this is How to Kill an Hour. I'm Marcus Bronzy. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we, we have yeah, go on. the incredible, amazing, my brother K, Kurt in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, 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 woo. I love the way you call me my brother and doesn't follow me on Twitter or anything, you know? <laughs> big up you, Funk Butcher. Yes, you keep man. doing you, my bro, yeah? <laughs> keep doing you. Why is it always on to me about that? Nah, it's cool though, because like, yeah, retweet man stuff though, innit? But always. Like, yeah. Mad retweeted. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time coming. I just want to say, bro, like, People need to understand that you are not just like how you are when a camera's on. You actually are like this all the time. I'm funny, innit? <laughs> 100. 100. <laughs> like, let's just, let's just put it out there. Like, I'm, I'm a fucking talented man, innit? Like, I'm joking. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I just I just feel like it's important to be authentic, man. Really? Yeah. Is, is that like, are there un, unauthentic comedians out there or are there people that switch it on? And, uh, I mean, there's people that don't switch off their phones um, during podcasts as well. Uh, they're really, they're really um, annoying. Um, <laughs> is that me? Is that you? <laughs> it is you, bro. No way. I don't have is alarms. You? I've got an Apple Watch, so my 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 one will come over here. Same. Where's that coming from? This is great. Is that an iPad? <laughs> what is that? Someone left something here. Oh, it was you, fuck <laughs> man. <laughs> I just like that. Where's it coming from? Yeah, it's, it's, it's become my kids from nursery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, fuck right. it. Let's go again, man. So this is How to Kill an Hour. Uh, my name is Marcus Bronzy. And I'm Funk Butcher. And, and I am K-Curd. <laughs> we are joined by... Bruv, you're just a hilarious guy, right? Yeah, I know. It's it's, it's incredible. I am very talented. Um, this is... <laughs> This isn't a game. <laughs> <laughs> right, before it's we get real. on to today's show, because it's going to get a bit crazy in here still, I just want to say thank you for subscribing to us. Thank you for leaving comments and letting us know how great the show is. Thank you for giving us five stars. And if you haven't done that, uh, come on. What's wrong out, with you, please. man? Yeah, man. What's wrong with you, man? Do it's that, a man. technology podcast. They'll send you a virus or something. Yeah, man. Don't do it, bro. So do it. Man, your he's got all your data. He's got all your data about who's listening, who's subscribing, so you can probably find somewhere. We'll take I your passport, porn, really. Just porn. send me that. Mad, yeah. Mad. Uh, Who you yeah. like? Nicole Aniston, innit? <laughs> <laughs> what, man? Let's just like. <laughs> We're well, being candid on this podcast, <laughs> man. Yeah, true say. But uh, yeah, so welcome to Hard to Kill Now, bro. Thank you very much. Been a long time coming. I'm really, I'm really enjoying being here. Uh, um, hopefully, I mean, at the end of this, my aim is to get a Funk Butcher follow. Um, this it's is, coming. This is, it's, I mean, man. Oh. <laughs> I bet every time I see a Funk Butcher release, I'm like, maybe. No, okay. No, uh, <laughs> not today. Okay. Yeah, legal okay. download, a legal stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck that, bro. Hey, I'm, I'm going to stream snips and stuff all, <laughs> all illegally, bro. <laughs> <laughs> have you not tried to follow him for a living proof ticket? <laughs> have you I'm not just... followed and unfollowed then followed and <laughs> no, unfollowed? No, 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 I don't do that thing. stuff. I don't do that stuff, bro. That's that. You see people that do that, I block them. Dude, there used to be one guy, Eddie Vegas. Oh, do you remember Eddie Vegas? He was he was urban folklore. This he was legend. The, yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows about Eddie Vegas. Yeah. 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 Eddie but Vegas. He had a lot of followers though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he keep unfollowing and following. Him. Yeah. Yeah, till yeah. you're you like, oh fuck it. And then one time I think he was who was, I think it must have been like Little Donatella or someone like cool that is. I'm just going oh this is like 2012 Twitter innit this is when people were saying racist yeah. stuff and getting away with it yeah um, <laughs> shout out Little Donatella yeah um, I don't know where she is but it was like um, he kept she called her out and then like everybody else was like oh my days yeah yeah, yeah. and I was because I just thought it was just me innit? Yeah, and then like yeah. you know when someone big says it and you're like oh shit <laughs> I think ironic because her name's Little but I think yeah. Eddie Vegas was a bot though I don't think he was a real person. Are you he was saying he was a German? No, I thought he was one of them. I thought he was just like some white rapper. You know the ones that like tried to fit 24 bars into like yeah. three? 64. One of yeah. those guys, yeah. yeah. I think he was a North Korean kind of like um, bit of AI created. <laughs> <laughs> to infiltrate GRM daily videos. Like, <laughs> like, like what, did, what did the Koreans want with that? Oh. <laughs> Crazy, <laughs> right? We're going to talk about you on today's show, bro. Oh, okay, Obviously. thank you. A little bit about you because you're here, would make sense. Favorite subject, um, but we do like to kill a bit of time, okay? It's part of the show, it's the name of the fucking show. And we've started like killing time with like a gadget or a game before the show. And you've had the pleasure, the extreme yeah. pleasure of uh playing <laughs> overcooked <laughs> to surf and turf, surf and turf, the kebab Absolute edition, trash game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
absolute tra- <laughs> What is this stuff? Like the graphics Like what were the graphics On there bruv <laughs> You know like the Other games like Mario used to have a point to it Sonic used to have a point to it Why is man cooking We've actually literally Got to a stage Where people are cooking on games And don't cook in real life Because I guarantee you The people playing that Put Deliveroo on <laughs> <laughs> Takeaway guys, yeah, yeah. Got, and got and got off, yeah, whatever Uber Eats. There are other brands available. Um, <laughs> they probably went and got someone to bring them food rather than actually cooking it themselves. But they're playing a game cooking food, so I thought that was trash. Do you, do you game usually? Like, do you game at you all? You know what? I used to when I was younger, but um, what with what I do now, I barely have enough time. Bro. Too busy. Yeah, man. Like the only game I kind of play is um, like the ones on my phone. So there's this game called uh, what is it called actually? Tinder, no. Uh, <laughs> 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 Swipe right for 10 Swipe points. Right. Yeah. Uh, 10, 10. It's literally just like a fake version of Tetris. So like, you just like, yeah, it's, hold on, I'll wait for it to load. What's it say? Gym games. Gram games. Oh, gram games. Gym games. No, man, man gets games anyway, though. Uh, so yeah, it's like a fake version of Tetris. So you get the same sort of things, but you put them out in a maze. It's got no oh, music. Uh, I, f- I put all the music off. Okay. I think people that have like music on on their phone and like their phone's not on silent uh, a serial killers or something <laughs> <laughs> no nah, seriously like why is your phone not on silent yeah, like you must not have anything to do <laughs> no nah, but big man thing like who, who who like who does have their phone on silent now i mean doesn't have their phone on silent anymore everyone has isn't it like if yeah, you, i'm on silent yeah you're on silent that's what i'm you saying just like, get that stage we don't care about ringtones anymore as well isn't it? bro that, that was the thing like it was I, I can't believe that to this day like ringtones was such a massive thing yeah but when your phone sounds like brr, 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 brr. What is that? Charleston? Is that yeah, Charleston? Yeah, that was no, sick. That was kick. And oh, then you had the hurdy gurdy. It was like. <laughs> that was a sick ringtone. Yeah. Yes. What, what else did you have? Um, no, no. I, don't, I remember when you could go on mrtones.com and then you could get like. When you had Composer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then you yeah. could like make 50 cent in a club and it just sounded like. Brr, brr. <laughs> None of them sounded like they were meant to. Oh man! So like, I got you down as a podcast host. I got you down as a comedian. I got you down here as a writer. Yeah, man. I feel like your entertainment is your thing. Yeah. Um. How did how did that happen, bro? Um. Sort of by accident and um down to like being lazy. Like you was bitten by a radioactive comedian. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's funny. <laughs> Shit, man. Yo, you got jokes. Um, do you know what it was? Like, um, when I was in uni, I remember doing uni, I studied biomedical sciences. I was like, meant to get into med school. What's that before that? And anyway, um, I actually got an offer for King's College because I am smart. Um, but um, I fucked up my grades anyway. I ended up studying biomedical science and I hated it. And mm. I was just like, it was in my final year and I entered this KISS FM competition to become a radio host. KISS chosen one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I got to the final 25, but AJ King beat me <laughs> and, and Tania Taylor beat me. Shouts and, to AJ, shouts to Tania. Shouts to AJ. He was, um, <laughs> he was just on the show before you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He won, he won that year, innit? Like, yeah, so yeah. big up him, innit? Like, yeah. but... I like I didn't know, but he was on like bang radio and all sorts. I had no radio experience. I just literally turned up to the audition going, Yeah, bro, man's gonna smash this. <laughs> like, and, thinking, like, thinking, and you know when I got to the final twenty five, I was like, Yeah shit, man, I'm gonna be a kiss presenter. Like this is mad. Like I've made like, it. Like I already started planning my life. Like I was looking over yeah. Oxford there because yeah. their offices used to be like <laughs> over Oxford Street. So I was just looking looking at people coming out of Uniqlo going, Bro, this is my life now. Uh, you <laughs> 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 I was thinking, Rob, I'm just going to be friends with Ricky and Melvin and this is going to be mad. <laughs> We're going to go for drinks together I'll be at Christmas parties. Hey, wh- I wonder what, mil- what drinks Melvin likes. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And then, and then it never happened, did it? So then people were like, but people on that day were like, you're funny. I'm like, mm-hmm. you should do comedy. So I just got, I got into like comedy on the black circuit. And um, which is funny because I thought everyone started on the black circuit. Yeah, I yeah. thought like, like, like I thought Michael McIntyre started off with like Tojo <laughs> and Richard Blackwood. <laughs> And slim in it, like yeah. I thought. I thought that's how it was. Like, like yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hello to my Jamaicans. <laughs> could you imagine Mac- of- Michael McIntyre at Corks? Yeah, you imagine went to the Corks line one. As I was saying, I'm like John Bishop, like, because they do do that, don't they, them Nigerians? They do do that, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all that sort of shit. Um, yeah, like, like so. Um, I did that, and I got into stand up comedy, and then like radio and stuff. I was, um, I was always doing like uh, community radio and stuff after that as a, as mm-hmm. a bit of fun. Um, and then gradually, 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 um, I got better and um, um, things started happening, uh, got management and whatnot. And then um, now I'm at the point where thankfully I can, um, I've, I, yeah, I, I gig all the time. 
Um, I've got my own podcast called Quotas Full with a bunch of other comedians, and um, I present on Asian Network from time to time, even though I'm not actually Desi. So that's a. Uh, How did that feel? Oh, what that one? Yeah. Do you know what's so funny, right? Because, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Like they have like names, obviously like, but like there'll be Asian names for certain stuff. Yeah. But I started pronouncing like even the English names like Asian. <laughs> 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 so it'll be like Raid, like this song by Raid, and I'll be like Raid. <laughs> 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 and they had like some guy called Shy Boss, and I was like, that was She Day Boss. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> so so then like they were like, no no, that one's actually in English. I was like, wait, I don't know in it. Like unless you tell me, they were like, anything you see, e, you just go a in it, and I was like. Putting too much sauce on yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would have been Michael Jackson. Like that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> no, people are out there probably appreciating that going, fucking no, he really knows Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Knows, but it was yeah. funny because like I ended up just like being a lot like like come on man, like certain names I was just like going like mad ham on it. But yeah, it's it's all great. And I did some writing on Don't Hate the Players on um ITV two as well. Um yeah, a couple Sick. of projects in development, but um you know how commissioning goes in this country, takes years and years. Sure, man, you got the deal. I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even just that. It's just like, oh, you're not famous enough yet, basically. Mm, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. I hear that, though. So, um, biomedical science. I just want to go back there. What What is it? like? We've what? had a lot of brain boxes on Bro, recently. We've, isn't had, it? we've had engineers Let on the show. Yeah. We've had, like, architects. I'm oh, who's people. the architect? Uh, who is the fucking architect? Who's the engineer? So the DJ. Engineer Who's is... Um, Anne Marie. Engi engineer is Anne Marie. Sorry, scientist. Yeah. My, Mr. Midas is a scientist. Mr. Midas! Yeah. Mm. Mad. Um, yeah. He was telling us about, I don't know, sub to something. I've forgotten. Maybe you should call yourself Dr. Midas. Dr. Midas. He sounds like an evil character. Yeah. No, but isn't... There's, a, there's another artist called Doctor. Ah. Just Doctor, innit? Yeah. Doctor, come but on! But Dr. Midas... Yeah. yeah, but then like it just sounds like you're begging it, innit? <laughs> <laughs> and then like obviously because there's Dr. Dre, you can't just go like everyone's like mm, you're not really. All right, fair enough. And uh, Amory is an engineer, so and then now you're doing biomedical science. Yeah, I did, did biomedical science. What, it was what do you trash. do? Well, it was what is a, it? A trash. Like you could probably become a pathologist and just like do blood test samples. Okay. It's absolute trash, bro. I remember like sitting in one because like you know like when you're looking around at everybody else like because you don't understand certain things going on and you're like why are you so good at this? Like, yeah. yeah. And you're just there like this is bad, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like I had no interest in it towards my third year and my tutor started hating me because she knew I didn't care about it and yeah. I was like, and you lasted th two years in there you did your you did the whole lot i did everything i did it all, i did Fuck. three years like i remember i think my last year in in third year i had about like six hours worth of lectures and contact wow. and i never went i probably ended up going up to like two hours a week you went to a few seminars though yeah, we didn't have seminars it was literally just experiments and lectures okay, in it. okay so i'd go into like the experiments and like i just put my white white coat on and then i'll just take the results from like <laughs> <laughs> someone else in it because i was like Oh, this is long, man. I gotta go what thirteen millimeter, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then uh, that was when I realized, like, I'm not really much of a planner. Mm. I'm not really that guy that's like very like meticulous with like, oh, it has to be thirteen millimeters yeah. here. Forty. Oh no, I fucked it up. Yeah. Uh, we have to do it again. I'm more yeah. like, let's just cut this cadaver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm more just <laughs> like, oh, shit, it's not a cadaver. <laughs> 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 but no, it's just with anything I am in life, like, say for example, starting a podcast, I'll be like. Like, say I don't know how to use the software. I'll be like, fuck it. Let's just buy the mics yeah. and we'll figure it out, innit? Yeah. Like, so... I'll, Baptism of fire. Yeah, I won't go in going like, let me do like a course on Adobe Premiere Pro and, yeah. and Adobe Audition and Logic and all this stuff. Yeah. I'll just go, but man got the software, innit? Like, yeah. So then just, oh, where's record? <laughs> all right, let's <laughs> move do, do, do you think people are nicking a living with that whole motivational speaking? Kind Absolutely. Of, because like you said, the best kind of um, way of entry into an industry or any field it's just by doing yeah absolutely and i also think a lot of those motivational speakers don't do anything outside of motivational speaking mm. so like where is your track record is that mm. like a snake oil kind of thing then you think they're just kind of selling something that yeah, doesn't yeah. Exist yeah but really? all right listen listen do you can you play music on here yeah, yeah man of course yeah play play like some like give me like some orchestral sound right <laughs> orchestral like, like, sound like, 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 let me just get my playlist <laughs> <laughs> like like do you, no but do you see what i'm saying it's like so simple like the um the 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 formula for a lot of this stuff is just yeah. so like predictable so there'll be some music and it'll be like and then like the guy will just come in like oh that's an advert okay hey. what's that an advert for go youtube music no one uses that um <laughs> oh, what I'm, huh yeah go on it'll be like <laughs> is, that what, is that what you want to go with yeah yeah and it'll be like an american accent i'll be like do you want to succeed <laughs> success is not given to you 
You've got to wake up every morning, every day, even the days you don't feel like getting up. And you've got to work. You've got to work harder than every other guy beside you. You don't look left. You don't look right. You look forward. And we don't look backwards. Why? Because we can't worry about what's happening behind us. All we have is what's in front. You wake up in the morning, every day, every morning, every second and every minute of every hour to go forward, forward, forward towards success. Sass, sass. <laughs> that is fucking brilliant. Rob, when's the course? <laughs> Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> and then... And then people listen to this shit going, bro, man, he's really saying some shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. But all it, in essence, I've just said rubbish. Like, and yeah. it's just like, yeah, I've just basically told you how time works. I think. So I feel like, you, so like Funk said, so you're the kind of person, I think you, yeah, there's space for talking, but you're a doer, right? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's how you get in it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So you went into the black comedy circuit. Do you remember your first joke, by the way? Like writing that, uh, like, yeah, this is, I'm like, trying to be funny. Yeah, it was awful, man. I, I, I must have done something about Jamaicans not being. I, I think, I, like, I had. I, Go on, let's, let's hear it. I had this joke <laughs> on why Jamaicans um, are so good at the hundred meters. Right. And it was just because they heard a gunshot and then they ran. <laughs> like, um, like it was mad racist, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it was I was going into predominantly black rooms and this shit was killing so I was like right like they because obviously like even when the way I speak and the way I talk like you know it's not coming from a do you know what I mean yeah, like, Malik, yeah. and I think I think for, for a lot of audiences they can sort of sense when it is and when it isn't so they yeah. were just like yo that shit's hilarious kind yeah, of thing okay. but I was just doing what everybody else did in it so I wasn't really speaking my truth it wasn't until like I sort of developed as a person I started talking about myself and my background and whatever but before I was just doing what I saw other comics do like oh, okay so you that's how you do comedy. You talk about Jamaicans and Nigerians, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that's what was going on on the black circuit at the time. And then um, gradually everybody sort of developed. And do you think like that's that. made you more resilient as a comedian starting off with that circuit? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> if you could do a black, what's it, a room full of middle-aged Caribbean ladies, you can do any room in the world. Because <laughs> you know when you go hey, on are stage... are we still talking about uh, comedy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, it's when you get on stage and you hear... Yeah. Like... Yeah. <laughs> you haven't told a joke, you know? Yeah, and they're just looking yeah. at you like... And then like yeah, so then you're just like all right. It's all right. He's he's he's, he's unjacked himself. I'm Can we find myself. the hole? Yeah, yeah. But when you could do a room like that, it's just there, isn't it? When you could do a room like that, I just feel like you could just do anything. So yeah, man. And 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 like when black people laugh, black people laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Whereas like you get like certain middle class white audiences that are like, mm, that was very interesting. There was no laughter. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. they'll come out and be like, I really enjoyed that. Mm. <laughs> I absolutely enjoyed that. That was <laughs> remarkable. Remarkable. So, like, what do you like the most about comedy? Because it's it's not easy. Um, it's the instant feedback. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to wait for the tweets to come in. You don't mm. have to wait for anything. It's like I will say something and I can hear laughter or not. So, I know something's resonated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and it's I think it's one of the only art forms left where you could actually say what you really want to say without yep. getting um, censored. Well, I mean, they were trying to censor some people, but like you could actually. Like Dave Chappelle can go on stage and say whatever the hell he likes, mm -hmm. kind of thing, within yeah. reason. In it, obviously mm -hmm. you can't just go on stage and be like, "Fuck all, whatever people, yeah. be racist and homophobic yeah. and that yeah. stuff." But yeah, I, I, it's, it's a great avenue to explore opinions, and I think um, we we do need a lot more free thinkers in this day and age, especially. There's way too many sheep. Do you, how, how, do you yeah, find go that going? I was gonna say, how long do you think that's gonna last for? Because I yeah. feel like there's a lot of comedy that's aging very quickly. Is in not as in it's not funny, but the PC police are yeah, on it. Yeah, like yeah. you could crack a joke Ooh. today. And next year, this time next year, you could be in trouble for it. Do you know what, though? Like, I think I think it's young people these days. A lot of these people getting offended by stuff are getting offended on other people's behalf. And uh -huh. it's like, who who are you getting offended for? Like, yeah. you, like a lot of these people, like, say, say you make a joke about, like, I don't know, man. Certain, like, say you make a joke about a certain type of country, like a black country. Yeah. You know I mean, like, you're Ghanaian, you make yeah. a joke about Nigerian. Yeah. And you did that in a, in a, in a, in a predominantly white middle classroom. Yeah. And then they go, ooh. Yeah. You're like, there's no Nigerians here, innit? No. Like, who yeah. are you getting yeah. offended on? Yeah. Like, or, like yeah. and a lot of the time, the people getting offended aren't even, don't, wouldn't even mingle with the people that they mm -hmm. claim to be offended for. Mm -hmm. Um, At the same time, I think, obviously, like, everybody has a struggle and we shouldn't just be making um jokes about certain people for the fucking sake of it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, you, you, you 
Like when I when I see certain people just making transphobic jokes or whatever, like if it's lazy and whatnot, you're just like, well, this isn't funny, in it. Like yeah. it's just, and and those jokes can have a detrimental detrimental effect. But at the end of the day, man, sometimes you just got to realize that some people say stuff on stage that they don't necessarily mean. Like that is just trying to get a joke out. Do you think that um, that aspect of people saying things just to get a rise out of people is the reason why um, industries like comedy is is falling um, foul of? the same things that have happened to music where it's just a numbers game now. So people are yeah. just doing anything to kind of get the notoriety as it were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I th- I feel like, I feel like with anything in entertainment now, I mean, it's like you said, it's just a numbers game and it's like you see some really great comedians mm-hmm. that they don't know how to probably like use social media effectively yeah, or whatever, yeah. and they've, nobody knows about them. And then you've got other people that like, barely had any stage time or whatever and they've got like hundreds of thousand followers or whatever on, on Instagram or whatever but they can't do five minutes on stage and you're just like well like w- w- like what's what's going on here yeah, do you know what I mean like yeah. and that's like because the way the internet has democratized the way we create things yeah it's also it also means there's no gatekeepers which can be a good thing and a bad thing because mm-hmm. before you used to be able to like filter through all the bullshit and mm. get all the quality but nowadays like you could it's like what this Ferdy coming fast guy like he's just saying you can't see me <laughs> and then like he's got like close to 500,000 followers and a, yeah. and, a, and a deal from like a clothing line and I think whereas it, there's like so many people that are like talented and whatever that can't even get to that sort of situation it's, mm. it's incredible so do you think your rise through comedy is like a, a dated experience now do you think that way of coming through the game that isn't the the, the set methodology of so, having a career so, in, in, so in comedy. So what you used to do is, sorry, what you used to do is you used to go, you used to do do do, do stand-up comedy, mm-hmm. if like this from a comedian's perspective, you used to go do stand-up comedy, go to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, mm-hmm. right, do do a month up there and then hopefully get recognised by TV, go on like Live at the Apollo or like one of those shows and then boom, your tour sold out, right? Nowadays, you go on Live at the Apollo, it doesn't have the same reach as it used to unless the clip mm-hmm. goes viral from it. Like you're not like one of my friends, Tezilias, he recently done Live at the Apollo and his clip went viral and he gained like massive amounts of followers. Yeah. From it. But if you just rely on the fact that you're on TV, it's not going to happen. Okay. Like, it's not going to happen. So nowadays it's a bit more um, the ways in order to, to become there's no, there's no set route. Mm-hmm. So like you look at someone like Mo Gilligan or Moda Comedian as, yeah. as he's been known, like he 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 didn't go to Edinburgh. He no. made, he he we done a like double hander together there like for like a week in 2015 like half an hour what's, what's a, what's, oh, is that half an hour hand hand yeah table? so so um we'd all Ign- ignore him so yeah like, I was, I was, like yeah. you separate an hour so <laughs> you're, I, I wasn't i wasn't i wasn't, there, I wasn't. I, it's cool it's cool it's cool um so i i'd go on and then he'd go on and then that we'd, we'd separate the hour like that um and we did that for about something but then like he he went off um and then done his own thing with like the videos and stuff and the videos mm-hmm. catapulted him to a stage where like he done a world oh sorry uh well yeah pretty much a world tour because he went to australia as well with it and mm-hmm. then he um he's been able to garner a following drake follows him all of that sort of stuff yeah um there's a there's a scouser comic called paul smith um he he went viral from little clips of him hosting okay. and he was able to sell out seventeen thousand tickets in liverpool alone uh, he done like the Hammersmith Apollo. He done the Liverpool Echo Arena. Like this is 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 incredible what the internet can do yeah. now for people. And he'd never used to gig outside of Liverpool. Yeah, he used to just be like, um, why do I need to gig outside of Liverpool? I've got my own cl- comedy club here that I get regular sets yeah. from. Like, why do I need to go and pay whatever for a train ticket to yeah. go and gig in London to people that probably don't like me? And mm. being able to find your audience now is so much more easy. But again, it's you just still need the breaks from like a couple of big pages. Yeah. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Which is again, like the gatekeepers have changed. It's no longer BBC one, two and three mm. and ITV one and two. It's like I'm Instagram. Just yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm just a bait. And, yeah. Yeah. And like yeah. Hackney's yeah. finest yeah. and yeah. these yeah. guys, you know what I mean? They decide who the next Kingmakers are. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because we had Dane on a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and he said a similar thing. He had a similar, he explained the similar trajectory of someone wanting to get into comedy they go to Edinburgh, yeah. so so on and so forth. And he, <clears throat> like he said, that the, I, I guess if you're confident in your in your content and your ability, you don't really have to worry about that aspect of things. I guess that's always going to going to be there. But it is a bit concerning because you do have people driving for the numbers, yeah. driving for the money, yeah, and that yeah. does kind of, um, I guess, 
um, dilute what comedy is supposed to be at. It is, it is the last space where you can say yeah, any, yeah, absolutely yeah. anything you want. Yeah. I, do you know what? I think, though, like, we're, we're in a very... It's, it's an exciting time because I think there's a lot of people that still adhere to the old methods yeah. and are very reluctant in order to adopt, like, technology and whatnot. whatnot. But in, in about five or six years, I don't think TV will, be, will remain the same way mm-hmm. it is. Um, mm-hmm. I, like, already now, when I, when I tell people, they'll be like, oh, I'll watch it on Catch Up, I'll watch it on Demand. Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. And the the attention span people say people don't have an attention span that annoys me people do have an attention span because yeah. they could go through whole box sets in a in a night yeah yeah um and because like you often have chats with like producers and whatever we're just looking for like short form content just like you know little three minutes <laughs> that's all they like that's all they like yeah, yeah. yeah. It, but it's like that, that the research shows that's what people like and it's like no if you actually invested in in somebody's idea yeah and and f- but you you were very smart with how you promoted it mm-hmm. then you could get things like like you could get like a whole sitcom but if you promoted it that's why i like netflix they mm-hmm. very they yeah. experiment with ideas a lot there was just this thing that went on the other night called bumping mics not, not seen it tell us about it. yeah so it's uh david tell and jeff ross and they're basically like just roasting each other for the whole hour okay so like when when they tell a good joke at uh, each other like he would just like bump his mic with each other. <laughs> okay cool so so but it's just like and then they'll have like guests on in it and like yeah. they'll come on and they'll like cuss them and then they'll cuss them back and it, it's hilarious <laughs> like like so like michael che came on yeah. and michael che just looked like he was just like <laughs> He says something like, "You you both look like um, rival porn store owners." Like, do you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's 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 it's, it's, it's funny stuff like that, yeah. like little experimental things like that. And they may not have like the biggest social media following, but Netflix knows how to mm-hmm. how to promote us. So, could stuff. Netflix be another kingmaker, like you said, because they do have that amazing reach and they have all the information and data to say, right, these guys like comedy, so I'm going to deliver K curd right to them. Yeah. yeah, are they the new gatekeepers of comedy? Well, I mean, again, Netflix is an interesting one as well because when you look at um, the way Netflix do things, one, whenever they don't give you any data, once they buy a piece of content from you, you don't get any information about how well that's doing. Like they, Shit. that's it. They buy the content off of you mm. and they take it. From, this is from what I've heard. This, this all may may fuck up a Netflix deal for me in the future. But, <laughs> 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 um, but the thing is, right now, like I think what Netflix were very smart in doing as well is they got like the big names under their belt. So they got like the Chappelle's, they got Bill Burr, they got like Chris Rock. Paid these guys incredible amounts of money. So like all the younger comics, now that's where they want to be. But my only fear is that it Netflix will get to a place where it's so saturated, yeah, you don't know what to watch. Because I go on Netflix sometimes and I'm just like, I spend more time looking through what to yeah. watch. And by which yeah. time I've finished my food and I'm like, and I don't sleep. even want to yeah. watch anything yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. so I don't want to get to a stage where it's like, there's like, because they're dropping like 45 stand-up specials on New Year's Day. Yeah. Like, like stand-ups around the world. Yeah. So it's like, that's, I think it's half hour special, sorry. But it's still like, you're 45 half an hour. Like, how are you going to get through all of that mm-hmm. straight away? And it's like, give me a trunk of Red Bulls, bruv. And I will get busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but do you yeah, see yeah, what I'm coming insane. from? That's though? Like, it's yeah, like it's because, because naturally life's going to get in the way and other things yeah. are going to come out, other yeah. specials yeah. going to come out and you're yeah. going to start forgetting about that sort of stuff. Um, and they have like these little 10 minute slots and stuff as well, which again, I met up with an American comedy, a comic called uh, Jack Knight and he was on one of those and he was just like, yeah, the money was great or whatever. And I was like, what's it done for your fan base? He's like, and I, and I checked his Instagram or whatever. I still had more followers than him. And I'm like, I ain't been on mm-hmm. Netflix. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, but it's it's just a really weird space because the way they they operate over there as well in America is very different to the way they operate in Europe. Mm-hmm. Like you don't just get random random comics get here getting like the... No. The, do you know what I mean? No. Like, whereas in America, like, it's like at one point, anybody that was half decent had a comedy central yeah, half hour yeah. <laughs> you know mm, I mean? mm, whereas mm. that sort of stuff doesn't really happen here I think we right. I think the, the attitudes to comedy are very different over there and over here as well like what you can joke about in America is very different to what you can joke about here oh definitely yeah Americans would just go on so Puerto Ricans yeah. <laughs> god damn yeah, like, and then yeah. people are like whoa my god this is hilarious and yeah like, eh. I mean do you find that from a comics perspective that a UK audience is th- th- they're more likely to be um, offended than um, let's say like culturally the way Americans are I, I, more... you know what I just I, I wouldn't want to make that assumption I just think mm-hmm. it's like it, it's always down to the room that you're in isn't yeah. it? and like the audience that you're in front of yeah. and I think like listen man you could go to some rooms in like, in Britain where like you'll say a joke and they're laughing for the wrong reason yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like I've, I've gigged in Kent in it like, yeah. that's what I'm saying in it so <laughs> 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 so 
So you see what I'm coming from? Yeah, like, yeah. So like, like you could go to that edge where they're not offended by anything. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get mad at me. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. So um, no, I wouldn't say that. But I do think like if you look at their big comedians, yeah, just the nature of their comedy, they're a lot like Chappelle, Bill Burr, whatever. It's all very much like opinion based, whereas with a lot of like top tier British comics it's a lot more like observational like so yeah, yeah. I was you know my cat Felicity yeah. does this yeah. and then it's like 15 minutes about a cat right? yeah what's your comedy like um it's the best no <laughs> uh, <laughs> um to be honest with you it's a lot of like my life experiences as well as like social observations but in mm-hmm. a political like like not political in the sense of like oh god the goddamn democrats and the republicans it's more <laughs> like just um satirical yeah, satirical, but in a way that people can understand. Yeah. So I try and bring it down to the lowest common denominator. Uh-huh. Where it's like, yo, bruv, like, yeah. this is it. You yeah. know what I mean? So um, everyone can engage. Yeah, and um, I try and put, like, like I, I can do impressions and voices a lot, so I try and put a lot of that into They into are this. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I try and do that because it's just, it's just I don't know what it is about a voice, like, but people just find, like, being able to sound like someone else funny. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a shit if I can do it. I, and I used to watch Eddie Murphy and go, oh, my days, like, how can you do that? <laughs> and then yeah do you think it's a, a necessity that the modern comic has to be comfortable with technology these days to kind of market themselves i have been telling people learn how to use technology man learn like, it learn it like you know i hate fucking all right this is goes out to any fucking millennial or anyone under 30 that goes oh man i'm terrible with technology <laughs> 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 how did you hear that phrase oh yeah. i'm terrible with yeah, technology yeah, man yeah. it's like it's not gonna get any better in it yeah, yeah like yeah, like yeah. it's it's gonna get worse yeah, for you yeah. like so if you don't know how to use, like when people ask me like oh, how did you do that video or whatever i'm just yeah. like i just done it on my phone like the amount of stuff you can do on an iphone exactly. or a, like yep. pixel or whatever it is like the amount of stuff you can do on a smartphone is incredible like mm-hmm. it is a mini computer in your hands and you're not utilizing it to like if you're spending all day and, and you're a creative and you're trying to create content and you're using your, your phone just for whatsapp yeah. like you're an idiot go get a nokia mm. Like it's just ridiculous to me. Like you, you can shoot, you can edit, you can make flyers on a on. A, you can make this. Yeah, actually, yeah. you can make flyers on yeah. on your yeah. phone. Can make on your beat, phone, make yeah. beats on there. Can make beats, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, real yeah. beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, of course, and and like I very much look at the grime scene in particular, or just the UK urban scene in particular, which was they were very much DIY. Yeah. It was like, yeah. do you know what the Brits won't let us in? This won't let us in. Do you yeah. know what? Let's just yeah. do things our own way. And they got to grips with technology. They got to grips on how to use things. And they were like, okay, cool. And you learn as you're going along. But yeah, you're like, yeah. right, let me just get stuff out here. Because that to them, like, there was this... It's like it's like when Wayne Rooney was 16, in it? Mm. Like, there was no... Like, I don't care about, like, what's going on in it. Like, yeah. I, I just want to do this. Yeah. Like, and, and he was just going straight at it. Yeah. And, it. and there was something so amazing about that. Because it's like, the, when there's no fear and you just do what you think's right and put it out to your people, it's incredible. And And... and Right now, your Instagram, your Twitter, and all these, these are like TV channels essentially open mm-hmm. to you to be able mm-hmm. to, to market stuff towards your, your audience. Yeah. And, and, and you can find your core audience from that. You're, everybody, think about the amount of time people are spending on their phones. You're competing against like videos of cats and stuff. <laughs> no, but you are. Like, yeah. It's like when people are like, oh, yeah, I'm a great comedian. It's like, but no one's checking like, who's doing a 20-minute set in Nottingham. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what yeah. I mean? And being like, oh, let me follow that guy. It's like... They're on their phone. They're on the way to work, and they'll see a video, and they'll be like, "Oh, that's hilarious." Mm. And then, then gradually, when they keep seeing videos of you or like content from you, they will be like, "You know what? Let me follow this person." Yeah, yeah. And then from that, that's how you gain fans. Like the traditional way of gaining fans, I think, is just just people just putting us up a stand up clip and going, "All right, let's see." I think it's become so saturated, and a stand up itself, I think, needs a um, there needs to be like a reshaping in the way we do stand up because I think interesting. I think I think people. <clears throat> People have seen so much people just with a mic on a stage. Yeah. And I think they've seen a lot of bad stuff yeah, comedians yeah. on stage. That there needs to be something else that that um that draws them in. Which is why I think Mo's thing was so amazing, because he wasn't putting up stand up clips. It was just clips of him doing something else. He's like, Oh, I can do stand up as well. And I've been a stand up comedian for mm-hmm. ten years. Come and see me on tour and you can see how good that is. So I think what you're getting at is and this goes to everyone who wants to be successful in any business, I reckon use the tools but don't just try and think you can put the same shit in the same places so like tailor stuff for instagram stories yeah tailor yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. for twitter yeah because so, i've noticed with you you're you, obviously you're very vocal on twitter and then with instagram 
I feel like you put a lot more of your clips on there on your story and stuff. Mm, yeah. Where there are people that will just be like, oh yeah, I made a funny vid and put it everywhere. Yeah. And not yeah, the same sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So is that kind of what you're getting at then? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's I mean, it's it's very important to understand like the different audiences on these different platforms anyway. Like so, but I think on, with Instagram, it's so funny because you could actually put a screenshot of a tweet and it will still go. I find I can put a screenshot of one of my tweets. I'll get over a thousand likes on that, and I won't yeah. get any retweets on it yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just you've got to be aware of like algorithms yeah. you've got to be aware of like uh, just the how people interact on that and you've got to be aware of your own fan base yeah more so than I've got run out. i'm gonna leave you to this for a second sorry billy's not here producer billy's i gotta get that i think that's a delivery carry okay. on though bro continue <laughs> yeah um i think it's it's um yeah you've got to understand how your audience reacts as well and what they what they like as well and like the stats are there to, are yeah. there for you but i think i think fundamentally a lot of creatives are lazy man yeah why though I don't understand. It's, it's, they need more of that dream tracer shit. That I was just <laughs> but, it, it, but I mean that in a in an honest way. Why? Because in an age where there is so much people, it has made the the chances of success harder. So, uh, I guess the the only rational um, uh, uh, um, idea would be that someone would need to work harder to gain that that top spot. But they don't. Yeah, they don't, they don't see, exactly. It's, it's not. Exactly. It's not. That's that dynamic isn't clicking with people. No, of course. And but do you know what it is as well? Though some people are like, oh look, I'm I'm an artist. I yeah, just create. yeah, yeah. I just want to yeah, create. Yeah. It's just like, okay, that was great in in the eighties, in it. Like, yeah. but we've moved on, and you can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to create. And there's a lot of people that sort of have um, animosity towards the online world and stuff, and it's just like, I don't want to just have to like put out content con constantly, and it's just like. Uh, cool don't in it but let me see like what your other uh, if you have an alternative to that yeah and a plan yeah to combat that yeah that's great so what is your writing process i mean how does someone who is kind of coming into a scene there's obviously established acts there and there's a whole heap of people behind you even though you are secure and confident in your own talent you're very yeah. hilarious person how do you always because we, we've had a discussion that you're you're a doer Rather, yeah, than, yeah, yeah. rather than the planner, some people might might call them procrastinators. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's a thin yeah, line. There's people that have been planning for ten years. <laughs> exactly. There's uh, a thin line between the two. Yeah, if, if you've got to take a leap of faith sometimes. That's yeah. what it is. And and even like when when I'm writing, it will be like something that I'm annoyed with or whatever, or something that I just notice. Like the other day, I was just thinking to like, I was on a plane back from Edinburgh. Yeah, and like I just had this idea. Like you know, I saw somebody like I was just l like looking at somebody else on one of, like like you know you looking forward. Yeah, people. And watching. somebody put their put their seat back. Yeah, and I was like, you lot should be the first to go in the apocalypse, bro. <laughs> now, do you, do you know, like you're a prick in it. Yeah, you're in economy yeah, in it. Yeah. You know the person behind you doesn't have enough space. Inconsiderate. Yeah. So like. You're the first to go yeah. because you're gonna snake anybody else yeah. when it comes to like like if we have to work together to kill the zombies or whatnot. Yeah, you're gonna be the first person that's gonna snake us and be like, "Fuck it, I'm going in this room by myself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking the baked beans." Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, we you'll be the one. You'll be the one going. Have you got any ammo? They'll be yeah, like, "Nah." nah, nah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like, I was just like, "This is a great way to right. filter out." Yeah, fuck the shit, yeah. it? Like yeah. anybody that. Puts their seat back on a plane. Like <laughs> when they get off, just have them go to a separate queue. They're yeah. the ones we kill off first. I'm a, but I'm it's just like, that. you know what I'm saying? Like it's just like yeah. little ideas like yeah, that that you yeah, get, and you're just yeah. like, like you just because because it's very like you could come up with so much. Like what is the reasoning behind this person doing this? Yeah. It? Like why are they putting their chair back? Like and then fundamentally it comes down to like you could a lot of character traits they're yeah. inconsiderate, they're entitled, they're this that the other, and then you can start drawing like par parallels with other stuff, and then you can just make a whole story about it and a theory. And do you ever feel like when you're writing um, content that you have to gauge whether or not I'm writing for on mass, whether it will connect with a lot of people, or whether yeah. I personally find it funny? So um, I mean, I used to like be very wary of. I used to write for the audience, uh -huh. and. That was why I was doing Jamaican jokes. And yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Because I was yeah. going to black audience and I thought, yeah. oh, this is what they want. Yeah. Um, whereas now I play most of the mainstream comedy clubs mm -hmm. and I'll still dip into the black stuff here and there, but I tell the same jokes. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if I feel like something's funny to myself, I think if you say it with enough conviction and you word it in a certain way, people will relate to it. Yeah. Funny is funny, isn't it? Fundamentally. Yeah. Like Fresh Prince was was hilarious. Yeah. Friends was hilarious. If yeah. People didn't care what was on there. Mm -hmm. It was just funny for what it was and it brought brought together like people from all sorts of backgrounds so mm. i think as long as you find it funny like you're there for a reason in it like yeah. and, and i come in, I've co before i did comedy I, I came into contact with all sorts of people and everyone was like no you're funny man like you're hilarious so it's just like part of it is trying to unlearn what you learn when you go on stage yeah so 
naturally the reason you get into stand up is like because you're just chatting like this to people and people are like oh my god you're hilarious mm -hmm. but then you go on stage and then there's a microphone in front of you and then you start trying to do your best chris rock impression or like yeah. your best kevin hart impression because yeah. like that's what you think comedy is and it takes a lot of stage time to try yeah. and like unlearn all of that and become yeah. yourself so you are the guy off stage that you are on stage mm. all right what kind of comedy do you like to consume um do you know what nowadays man like I, I don't watch that much because i'm just like one i'm scared of like being influenced and two yeah because i like i'll watch bill burr and then like, i'll end up if i'm writing that day i'll be like everything i'm writing is in like bill burr's voice like you know that guy <laughs> and, <it's just> like, <laughs> like, and then you just like end up going oh fuck like i've turned into or I'll, I'll watch like kevin hart and i just start going no like, yeah. oh, my, <laughs> and it's like no this is like whatever but um i like Chappelle, obviously like mm -hmm. i've seen Ch i saw Chappelle seen Chappelle live like I think three or four times now yeah. and I saw, I've seen him like I saw him at a small comedy club mm -hmm. 200 people Naomi Campbell was there mm. I saw him in the Royal Albert Hall with John Stewart um I saw Chris Rock at the O2 and I saw um Bill Burr I've seen yeah I've seen Bill Burr like twice as well and he's fucking insane what, what what is it that makes Chappelle Chappelle right I think do you know what one thing that annoys me about Chappelle is there's a lot of people that go oh I love Dave Chappelle they don't love Dave Chappelle because they can't quote your Dave Chappelle joke yeah right? They just like the idea of Dave Chappelle yeah. because everybody thinks he's great. Uh -huh. And then like, but you see them laughing at pictures of someone falling down. Like, <laughs> so there's a lot of bandwagonists. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. There's people that like, you know, when it, when you look at certain people and they go, "Yeah, man, I love Dave Chappelle," and you're yeah. like, "Yeah, but your like, I'm, your mental capacity, yeah. um, you don't understand his jokes." Exactly. Um, what is it about Chappelle? I think the way Chappelle is fearless. He's able to like tap, like that. Sub he had that joke on one of his specials. We were talking about the whole Me Too thing and Kevin Spacey. Oh my, yeah. But it's like he takes it to us. Yeah. Like that kid, fourteen years. Yeah, fourteen years he kept that information. Fourteen years, mm. and he went through all that anger and that pain. If he kept it in for another six months, I don't know how House of Cards ends. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's just like, like, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it takes yeah, you along yeah. this li emotional yeah. thing, and it's yeah, like yeah. such a serious subject. But then deep down, it's like. He's exploring your own selfish needs, yeah, in it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, fuck it, that's hard, in yeah. it. But like, House yeah. of Cards, yeah. in it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I think that's what's amazing about Chappelle. He could take something like that, and it's like Chris Rock. He used to be like such a. He used to he used to make great points, but it was just funny. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's that's the same thing about Chappelle. I like as well. It's like, I mean, sorry, um, Bill Burr. I like as well. Like he'll, he's able to to make a point, even if it's not the point that you agree with. Mm -hmm. You're just like this is fucking hilarious. Like the way the like his thought process makes you go. Yeah. Like he's got this bit about how like more races need to speak to each other. Like because he's like he's like because white people missed the memo on using lotion and black people <laughs> missed the memo on registering your guns. Like yeah. <laughs> so so <laughs> he's like so it's just like so hilarious when yeah, you look at that like, yeah, concept because yeah. he's like. All they need is one white guy there scratching like, dude, is that thing registered? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting because you've highlighted Dave Chappelle and what you say is also that there's a lot of people kind of gone into the Dave Chappelle wave. Yeah, yeah. And do you think that, that, that sea change, that shift has come about? Because what we would have expected from our politicians, we're not getting. So this level of honesty is now having to be done by I the, the, the comedians. I think, I think what's more indicative of where we are with comedy is if we look at the music. Mm. When when Chappelle was at his peak and Chris Rock was at his peak and there was that introspective and there was that it was do you know I me mean, that brand of sort of like people looking at it, Jay Z and Nas we've we got mumble rap yeah now nah, exactly and now we've got mumble rap yeah. which is so like throwaway and disposable yeah, yeah and you've got Kevin Hart who's an amazing comedian but Kevin Hart's comedy he, it's it's very like commercial yeah but it's it's also but that's how you can sell out a stadium yeah right? like he. He's phenomenal at what he does, but like there's a lot of people couldn't tell you a Kevin Hart joke, but they yeah. know no yeah. long yeah. dick. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They know yeah. these catchphrases. Yeah. And that's what sticks in people's heads nowadays yeah. Yeah. because it's so well, unless you're a proper comedy fan, like the masses aren't really gonna go and memorize jokes. They like and Kevin Hart's very good at being able to be very expressive with his face and whatever, so it yeah. turns into memes. And then he's also got these catchphrases that stick in people's heads. So yeah. they'll come out and they'll be like They'll be like, what what joke did he tell? And people are like, no, that bit where he was like, oh no. Yeah, yeah. And then like immediately, like, that's that's become the joke. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like same thing with music now, like it's a hug it, hug it, hug it. Yeah, hug it, yeah. Hug it. And it's just like, what did he say? So is that brand of comedy not doing well? The kind of comedian that would um I think it's like um like Lee Evans? 
mm. back in the day and he used to trip over stools and and the evidence will still sell out and stuff yeah. but it's like um, I mean, but I mean that, that comedy style I, I mean I don't know like because if you look at a lot of the new comedians from the UK um we don't we don't really have like the same output in terms of on TV anymore yeah. or whatever it is a lot of UK comedy is just stories yeah it's like people telling you about like their day and like all this interesting story where they went to this certain place and whatever and a lot of it is is funny but um it's not particularly the comedy i grew up watching mm. do you know what i mean like i think kevin bridges is fucking amazing i think kevin bridges is hilarious and he has like he has that sort of um he has that sort of thing where he can take uh like he's got that joke about david cameron for example he's like david cameron's never woken up at 12 in the afternoon and tried to piss off a ski- skid mark off a toilet <laughs> like do you know what i mean but he take like like he could have just said david cameron doesn't know what it's like for yeah, a real yeah, man yeah, in yeah, it but yeah. he takes an example of what a real man yeah. or like a normal yeah, everyday guy yeah, does yeah, and it's like yeah. and it's like it's such a it's one of those things where like when you're writing it you're like am i the only person that does this in it <laughs> yeah so but yeah. then you do it on stage and you yeah. realize like there's so many guys that yeah, have done it yeah. so that that's where it's so relatable and funny and i think um yeah i think i think the one th- place where we're lacking in terms of the uk and uh with, with america is we invented satire but now americans have taken satire and yeah they, they killed just, it yeah like, look at yeah. the office man yeah. the office yeah. over there done so well yeah. and you know brooklyn 99 and stuff like that yeah well even just they're like like john oliver mm. he's over there mm. hassan minaj he's got his own show on netflix you've mm. got trevor noah doing yeah. the daily show yeah. over there like their their late night talk shows and stuff they've got like blah blah, blah plus like thing is americans have got a lot more money to throw at stuff mm-hmm. and and they've got a lot more um money to be able to invest in talent so mm-hmm. like you could get a development deal over there and you're getting paid 100 grand whereas he yeah. was like this is a thousand pounds okay like, <laughs> 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 well that ain't gonna come yeah. rent in it but i mean even Gina yashere she's got, kind of gone over there and she's doing really yeah. well out of it but it does seem to me that it's because the environment politically has starved them of something that they they craved as a society maybe not well Gina Yashri's reasoning was hilarious she said like there's a glass ceiling in Britain and she said of course there's a glass ceiling in America but at least the glass ceiling in America means I can drive a Lamborghini yeah so, that, is, that is brilliant that's a very good yeah, point so, that yeah. is very Gina yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so she, yeah. That, that was hilarious I yeah. mean obviously there is still I think I think with 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 um, America I mean people you could just say oh it's racism but I just think that's very lazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got to look at what it is. I mean, people bang on about diversity in this country, but I don't like. I I I don't agree with just putting people on screen just because whatever. There needs to be quotas, but I think change diversity off screen. Yeah, and that's where you will see what goes on on screen naturally change. And off screen, you mean in terms of the writing and the the. the back- I mean in terms of producers, yeah. in terms of runners, in yeah. terms of researchers, mm-hmm. in terms of all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because what a young uh, Asian kid or a young black kid from inner city areas consumes is different to what a uh, Oxford mm-hmm. graduate yeah. um, from, from home counties. Yeah. Um, there's like there there will be certain people that had no idea about Michael Dapper. No, mm. do you know what I mean? Like like and then it's like he, even but, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see where I'm coming from? But yeah. it's like you need people that are of that age, of that demographic, uh, that understand that culture. To be behind the scenes and then naturally you will see what goes on on screen change by virtue of the influences these people have do you feel that happening no mm. you, you i mean you'll probably get like a, a young black intern on like a internship or something or like yeah. a or like one of these schemes that tries to get like 18 to 25 year olds into thing but <laughs> do you know what i mean but but he like, just probably just got lost and he went through the wrong door but no like you he's, could... gonna get, he's gonna get ejected by security soon <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean i mean for me it's like I mean, it's, it's it's the the issue is like there's lots of people that mean well in it, but like a lot of people just do like hire people in their own image, which is like you, uh, it's like where does that come from? Unconscious bias, blah yeah, blah blah. blah. Yeah. We start getting into these things. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to just call it racism straight away, but it's like you you do get a lot of people that just don't know yeah, like they, yeah. that they're doing something bad like they're very well-meaning people yeah, but yeah like unless you actually point this stuff out to them they're like oh crap yeah. i didn't mm. know that like if if for example you went to a production company or like these tv channels or whatever and it was like you had like um uh, a workforce that was a lot more representative of what you see from the audiences mm-hmm. and and what annoys me is when people go um what are you saying it all white no i'm saying like there needs to be white working class people in there as well because yeah. A lot of white working class kids can consume comedy or art 
from black and brown creators. Yeah. More, do you know what I mean? Oh, more so, yeah. yeah. Like you look at you look at a, a, a like a UK rapper's audience, mm-hmm. and it's just like ninety five percent of the crowd are white, yeah. or m- most probably working yeah, class, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we need to change what goes on behind the scenes in terms of to change what's on screen because you could just because a lot of the time they would just be people like, oh yeah, we've got an Asian, we've got a black guy, whatever. But it's like if you look at that particular comic, like they may be Asian, yeah. but it's like. Do they represent the Asian community? And that was done more to satisfy the the needs of Ofcom rather than yeah, <laughs> or just to be like okay. And but it, I I don't like the idea as well is that like okay we need a girl, yeah. we need a we need a we need a brown person we need a black person because yeah, yeah. then it just feels like, wh- and, and once you start announcing that you're going to put qu- quotas on 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 stuff, it just makes it makes it to the people that don't like it. Yeah, it feels tokenistic. It's like well they're only on there because yeah. they're black. Yeah, and then you get that sort of annoying thing where they're in it's like well you're not even that funny you're only in there because you're and black. I guess it cheapens that, that, the, the achievements of that person yeah. going into that yeah, role yeah, as well yeah, yeah. Mm. yes it's very hard but that's why I think like you've got to be undeniable and like cr- focus on having your own audience because when it gets to that sort of, sort of stage where like you're being called on by like a lot of these a lot of whatever platform it may be mm. you're like well look this is my amount of followers this is my engagement Beyond your yeah. own audience, do you feel a need that there has to be a situation now where you start creating your own platforms, maybe, for instances like this? I feel like we are always in the shadow of America and what they've done. Yeah, yeah. The, that Def Comedy Jam thing that we've we've seen for years. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but come on, like, if we're being honest with ourselves, as great as Def Comedy Jam was, there were some people on there that you were like, nah, this ain't Yeah, this. skip yeah. that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, Hamburger, like <laughs> you can't say hamburger for fourteen times, bro, and then just just expect me to just be like, "Yo, this is a man." Be, no, I'm a hamburger. Nah, bro, nah, I'm not. I'm calling bullshit on that one, in it. Like, um, but I mean, creating our own platform, a bit, people go what? Like, it's it's hard, you know. Yeah. Like, and who's really gonna do it? You need yeah. money. You yeah. need time. Like, I reckon. Like, I mean, I think I think it's great when you see people creating their own stuff. Mm-hmm. Like Michael Dapper did it. Uh, Kod did it with Hood documentary. Yeah. Um, you've got Moda. He just done his own sketches in his bedroom. Like you've got like people just creating stuff. Like just create something in it. Yeah. Like this is what annoys me when people are like, oh yeah, TV's not not yeah. looking at me or whatever. And it's just like, bro, like you've got a phone. You've got just put some shit out there yeah, in it, man. Yeah. Just like, fucking record yourself like playing FIFA. Yeah. Like just anything. Yeah. Like, there's people making money off that as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But that's the beauty of it. Yeah. There's a kid I saw I read in Forbes or whatever. He's like, he's making 22 million a year. Right, he's the yeah, richest yeah. kid yeah. on. We actually was yeah. talking about that before we press record. He's the Bro, richest reviewing, kid from Reviewing, reviewing toys. Toys. Seven yeah, years like, old. Do you know? Like, and when I tell people this stuff, I'm like, bro, there's like you don't know what your niche can be. Just yeah. start doing stuff, yeah, man. Yeah. If you're proactive about it. And and the one thing about social media is as well, like. Even if people don't find what one video funny, if you've got a track record of stuff that's made yeah, them laugh, yeah. they're just going to be like, all right, cool, well, that one wasn't funny, but tomorrow he'll make yeah, me laugh. Yeah, or tomorrow definitely. she'll make me laugh. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. there, But there's a fear with people that are like, oh, I don't know what to do and whatever. But yeah, uh, I think just creating your own stuff and then if people, if it's good, eventually people will gravitate towards it. Like when Chicken Shop, was it Chicken Connoisseur? Yes. Yeah, 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 his yeah. stuff was like his videos were on there like from like 2014, 2015, yeah. or I think it was like something like that. I don't know. It was like, but it was like by the time it blew, it was like a year later. Mm. So the catalog was made, there. Yeah, like he, but he, like before he was only getting like 500 hits, mm. and then like, can you imagine if he gave up at 500 hits? But it was like it took for someone to see it and it to go viral on Twitter, going, "Raw, what is this?" And then he got like a. A show on Channel Four and whatnot. Tasting one thousand pound kebabs. That's another <laughs> story. It tastes like the most expensive food out yeah, there. Really? Yeah, yeah one thousand. Yeah, brav. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, you spoke about quota quite a lot of times. Um, podcasts it's called quotas full. I guess yeah, that's a little lean in the direction, a little jab at that end. Yeah, we we just called it quotas full because it's just black and brown comedians mm. talking about mm-hmm. like just whatever goes on in that week or whatnot. And um, um, we just when we came up with a name it was actually Darren Harriet who's a comedian he was just like why don't we just call it quotas for and I was like yeah that's great that's fucking <laughs> yeah, right. everyone in the group was like yeah fuck it let's just do it um, but yeah we just fuck around man and I, it, again it was just another avenue for people to find out that we're actually smart and we're funny conversationally yeah. mm-hmm. rather than and I think that's very important in this day and age where people people might think you're funny on stage but they're like right is he funny in real life and Yeah. like if people would just realise you're funny just saying stuff off the top of your head and yeah. they're like oh shit this guy's the real deal right? do you know what I mean so uh, it's just another avenue for us to to showcase our talents as well as just um, delve into some issues that may necessarily be spoken about um, Dane's quite vocal on there 
um, you wouldn't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you wouldn't. You. I don't think you see a certain side of comics um, elsewhere. On, yeah. But you do on our podcast. I like think it's you, great though. Yeah. It's, it's great cover, to see that, yeah. that that spectrum of a character. Yeah. yeah. We cover everything from Brexit to Twenty Four Hour McDonald's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We 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 talk shit in it. There'll be a time where we're just talking about like experiences, and then there'll be sometimes we're just we're, we're talking about structural racism. Yeah. Like, but yeah. it'll flip. Like, but. The idea is like you you learn something and you're like that's why at the end of it we go yeah, so what did you learn today with each other because it's like that but the idea is we learn something through just having conversations and mm. laughing and whatnot. So, and I think yeah. it's interesting you say that that you have to kind of display the, the the aspect that you are a funny individual. Yeah. So you 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 actually have to market your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because I mean I think I, again I think people lost a lot of trust with like stand up comedians when they saw a lot of people on TV that, that they didn't find funny. Yeah. Not not just from this country just yeah. in general like. Yeah. So I think people are like people will see like YouTube personalities and um, they see a lot of Instagram stars and whatever, and they're just funny on their stories. Yeah. So like you have to compete with those people, and that's that's a uh, um, that's an arena now where like stand up comedians have to fall. Like it's like you are competing with your YouTubers, you are competing with your bloggers and yeah. vloggers and yeah. these people for for screen time, yeah. essentially on a phone. So you've got to you've got to be you got to play them at their own game, and be like yo, but I've got something else as well so come yeah. out and see me and I guess it makes sense because if I was to see Neymar walking down the street to Tesco's in Paris I don't know if we've got Tesco's out there but if, and if I threw him a ball outside and you couldn't do kick ups I'd be like hey what's, what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, exactly. there's a disconnect like, you're this skillful player on the pitch why can't you replicate that yeah, like, yeah, in the car park here? yeah exactly exactly and I, I mean I, I, do you know what it, it depends on what the type of comic you are as well but I firmly believe man like you have got a MacBook you have got an iPad mm. You can create things. That Use it, God like. damn it! Yeah, honestly, like, I mean, it's all very well, and like, there's, yeah, I mean, there's so many comedians up and down the country, mm. and not just here in America as well. So, like, for you not to use what's at your disposal is just like an own goal, really. Mm. So cheap. It's easier than ever, isn't it, man? Yeah, and and the great thing is, if you know how to learn all of this stuff, um, learn how to use all of this stuff. Sorry. Nobody can take that away from you. No. These platforms that you got, like, How to Kill an Hour, no one's taking that away from you, no. right? But you could easily be on a radio station or you could be on a TV show and then the boss will come in, like there'll be a new boss and they'll be like, you know what, we're going in a new direction. Sorry, Marcus. Sorry, Funk. Yeah, um, yeah. Where you're done. And you're like, well, we were having fun. There's yeah. people that, that enjoy hearing us, but no one can take How to Kill an Hour away from you. Yeah. You've got this. You've got this space and you can just put it out. You could put out three episodes if time permitted. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? All right, whatever. fucking hell, bro. Don't that's, put the pressure on. That's, that's, like like a, <laughs> that's like a Dame Dash and DJ Envy moment. It there. is, isn't it? It no, is. No, no, Can it you is. give your son a job? <laughs> 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 but it's true, though. Like, yeah. like a yeah. lot of people got onto yeah. Dame Dash when he said that statement, yeah. but it made a lot of sense. It was it, like... It made perfect sense to me. Yeah, I knew what he was It was like, yeah. because it, tomorrow, the bosses at iHeart wake up and they go, fuck the breakfast. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm looking for something new. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, Bam! That's that's got that. Got, you don't have any of your subscribers, any of this, that, the other. You're 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 done. Like, mm. and it's and it's very important. Like, whenever you're creating anything, I think as well. Like anything on TV or whatever. If you came up with an idea, make sure you get an exec producer credit mm -hmm. or something because because if you're just if you wrote it, you came up with the idea. Yeah. Don't let them take that away. From so you. don't hate the players. Have you got the exec? Producer. Well, I didn't come up with an idea. Okay, but if you've got, I've got a writing credit okay, on there. Okay, there yeah. we go. Right. So, so you, yeah, because yeah. I know there's a lot of people that have been scorned by that kind of. Yeah, no, I've got a writing credit on there. I'm like a show associate comes up as, uh, okay. yeah. and um, uh, I was I appeared on one of the episodes as well. So it's like it's just being able to have like good management to understand that sort of stuff as well, and being switched on yourself as well. Because a lot of people somehow like are grateful for every opportunity they get. And I'm not saying don't be grateful in it, but at the same time, like anything you do is a partnership. Now, yeah, it's like, yeah. Like you've got to understand that like you did put in all of that work to be in that position. Mm -hmm. Like be grateful, be polite, but don't be like grateful to the point where it's like, okay, yeah, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So you're subservient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like stay true to yourself as well, man. Like, you, yeah. like people, people like you for, for you, innit? Like, and if you're being called on to do a job, like they're, they're calling you for a reason in it so yeah. don't try and make it like yes master yeah <laughs> <laughs> absolutely sir yes, yes master of course, <laughs> of course like, so you've got to be you've got to be a lot more um yeah you've got to uh, believe in your source man believe yeah. in your wave yeah in your wave and your source yeah do you, man. do you feel compelled though in the age of every day constant comment content 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 that y your productivity has to get it's it's pushed to a point where it might compromise the the writing and the quality yeah, of the writing. Yeah, I mean I I mean that's that's a 
it's a, do you know what I think one of the most important things is to not look at what other people are doing yeah. and compare yeah because I feel like as a musician I feel yeah. like with all this the streaming things and and music being such a throwaway art form Bruv, and you look at Drake and a guy could come up with banger after bat and you're well, like how it. am I how, how, why yeah, yeah. but then you look at Drake and it's like okay you've got to understand like Drake can wake up in the morning he's got access to studio engineers yeah stu- like his own studio he's got producers on hand yeah he's got people that can like i do like I, I don't fancy singing today can you sing this hook like that yeah let me see how that sounds are you, are you defined on that level where <laughs> i don't fancy writing today so. <laughs> <laughs> i never said that i mean i never hey, said it's, that. it's the it's the music scene yeah. bro yeah. he's not the first or yeah. the last person but yeah. to get right but are you it's defined coming. on that level whereby like we say with drake if i look at drake and say that well if he's putting that much content out there i've got to at so least this, match. Is, this is the thing right yeah. like i looked at like for example i saw Chappelle when he done that special it was the mean two thing it was like six He's, that special went out six weeks after filming. Right? Yeah. And I was like, fuck, how has he been able yeah. to work? But Chappelle can go to any comedy club in the country and be like, yo, can I do an hour tonight? Yeah, yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, fuck, sh- cool. And they're yeah. cancelling anybody else that was on that night. I can't do that. No. I can't just call up. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be like, what are you mad? They'll yeah. put all my other bookings. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? but, but do you think his career is, does he have to do that? No, I mean, in this day and age, it's weird. Like, because in order to stay in people's Minds, yeah, yeah. I feel like you have to yeah. do that. But that, if you look at somebody like Michael Che, for example, he's head writer on SNL. He released a special in 2016. He hasn't released one since. Yeah. But you can, you know, he's working. Yeah. But the, I mean, I, I think, I think as long he, as long as you have something else that you're giving them, like he's yeah. giving him SNL, isn't it? Yeah. You, then you don't need to come out with another special every hour. But mm-hmm. Chappelle, all he's doing is a special. Yeah. All he's doing is stand up. He's not doing anything else. So I suppose you do expect that from him because you're like, what the fuck? What, what else are you working mm, on, bruv? Mm. Like, like, what, like if it's um, like Joe Rogan, for example, he's got yeah. his podcast. Yeah. I don't think people are on him that much to be like, yo, I want to see a new yeah. hour every year because he's providing them with content. So yeah. I, I think at least you're, if you're providing some sort of content, your fans want to want to engage with you and want to be with you. But I could not be a musician, man. I no. saw like was it Lil Uzi Vert, who I don't really listen to, but he... um. He's he just released an album and his fans were like, oh god, it's been three like it's like three months ago, isn't it? And yeah. his fans are like, oh god, man, when's this new Lil Uzi album coming? I, I was like, are you mad? Yeah. Well, we, when yeah. you used to have to wait for a Jay Z yeah. album, do you know yeah. how long it used to take, bro? Like, and people are just waiting, for, but waiting. For, but then again, like, yeah, if you could just go hubba hubba hubba. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the future in you, of you then? Like, like, talk, talk us through what the plan is, man. Where are we gonna see you at? Um. Well. I don't really want to give away like my ambitions. Yeah, yeah, are to be. Um, I want to get into like Hollywood films, and um, I want to. I want to like be able to. I just want people to look back at me and go, "Do you know what? Like, he w- he was he was funny and he was smart. <laughs> that was yeah. that's like if if we're being egotistical about it, that's what I really want mm-hmm. to be honest with you. But I just want to be able to showcase all my talents. Um, I enjoy presenting. I enjoy. Um, I enjoy acting and I enjoy being on stage. So if I could do all three to the best of my ability and people get to see it and I become very rich. I mean, we say we're doing this <laughs> for the love. So real. If we people say we're doing this for love, big man, if this doesn't pay off in about five years, I'm going into something else. Like, <laughs> I'm going back to retail, fam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, listen, I'm going to find something to do in it. Back like, to them blood tests. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> like, boy, he's back studying. He's he's back studying a bit, yeah. Do you know what? I'm hey, Dr. Kurt. I might start managing people, innit? Yeah, like, yeah, I'll just be yeah, like, yeah. Oh, big man, come here. Let me yeah, take let me take 15% of whatever you're earning. Yeah. But yeah, no, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff I want to do, but I mean, let's just hope, like, let, I, I, I want I want to start, I want to be able to, like, be in a position where I can create my own content, even if it's, like, filming a special. Like, I I'll, could see that. Yeah, I'll shoot it, and I'll be like, okay, cool. Um, boom, I'll put it out there, and mm-hmm. I, don't want, I don't want anybody else to have to dictate mm. when my material can come out, because yeah. like it, it's a bit annoying. That's the direction the world's going in, man. I'd like to see some skits of yours as well, like, do you... Do you, do you like some TV skits. I like to see some more of that, like from you, like that, like your opinions, kind of like Chappelle did. You'd have an opinion yeah, on about yeah, the yeah. and we yeah, kind of yeah. see that visualized. Yeah. I like to see that, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Is that something that t- takes your fancy or not? Be honest. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll be sh- I'll be announcing when I'm shooting a special soon, so it's gonna be my, my the show I took up to Edinburgh, right? Uh, in 2017, and it sold out in the Soho Theatre. Sold out four Sick. nights there as well. 
Um, but I just thought to myself, like, people were like, oh, where's the footage? I couldn't make it, it sold out, whatever. I just thought to myself, why don't I just shoot it and just put it out there? Mm-hmm. Like, so I think I'll put, like, I'll, I'll decide how I'll do it, but I think I'll probably, like, have half of it up, as in for free. And then if you want to see the rest, like, mm-hmm. just give, them Pray a, me. give them a donation. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. You can see it in it. With but, but it's just like, yeah, it's just about being smart about the way you do things, man, because, like, you could do a TV spot, but then it depends on how they edit it, what bit you want it yeah, out of here. Like yeah. Some of the stuff that you want it to go out probably won't go out and whatever, but if I do it this way and whatnot, it's like, okay. obviously it may not have the bigger platform, but it means that when I do eventually grow, I've got a back catalogue that people yeah. can look out, look out on. Look forward to it, man. Um, yeah. Quick question. Like, obviously you came up doing the black comedy set, like you said, and now you're kind of moving into more of a commercial world. How do people identify you? This is weird. I think I think diversity quotas don't work in my favor. Yeah, where do you get? Where because do they put you? They don't. That's the whole point. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, because if somebody wants a show that's visibly diverse, yeah. I look very ambiguous. Like, you, mm. if I didn't tell you I was Kurdish, you probably guess. Like, I've had people guess anything from South American all the way to Afghan. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Nobody, like nobody, really gets it. So, if you're putting like, and and at the end of the time, if I told you my name was was Michael, mm-hmm. and my dad was like. For half something and my half, half Italian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. You, you probably believe yeah, it. Yeah, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. And then, like, fundamentally, you're white, innit? So, for someone to come in with diversity quotas and be like, yo, he's not quite brown enough for the Asian stuff, he's not quite black enough for mm. the black stuff, and he's not quite white enough for the white <laughs> stuff. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I don't think I fit into any of those sort of boxes. And this is what I'm, I'm currently writing a new show, which is um, it's going to explore um, how much of a chameleon I am. Um, diversity proof yeah exactly but <laughs> but 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 more so around like how because we all do that thing where we change our voice depending on where we talk yeah everyone's got mum voice yeah. yeah that's where it starts mum voice but yeah i i sort of did that in a like because i was able to hang around the black kids the yeah. asian kids yeah. the white yeah. kids yeah. Whatever, yeah. all my life yeah. so it's exploring that and it's and, it, and i take it back to my name yeah like yeah. my actual not my stage name my real name yeah. and it's like how that pertains to it and whatever so that's that's currently what i'm writing on and working on so um hopefully i'll be ready by i've been summer 2019 August Look forward 2019 to it, man. yeah so hopefully that one will be ready but um yeah um, it's 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 a it's an aspect that i'm looking at because i feel like i can appeal to anyone yeah i've done like h- hardcore muslim tours mm-hmm. and then like i've done like co- like black circuit I've done the white circuit. I've been mm-hmm. to the Edinburgh Fringe, mm-hmm. I've, and I've been and I've got like positive reviews in mm-hmm. like four and five star reviews. So it's like I I often I often think because there's nobody like me, yeah, that's that's gonna be my strength in the future. Mm-hmm. So maybe that people may not be checking on me now. And it took a long place for me to start thinking like this, right? Yeah. But like, there's a lot of internal struggles where you're like, "Why is men not what blowing?" Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what? Man, seeing everyone blow, like, what's going on, bro? Like, but so, it, it, it's harder when you're making that comparison with other people. What you've got to understand is like, th- sometimes a certain thing is in fashion, and do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like sometimes, like, gets couldn't have come out, for example, mm-hmm. without having like Tinchy and them not. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. This guy, like, all of that sort of yeah, shit. Like yeah. we couldn't have had. You had to have the N dubs, and you have to have all that yeah, before yeah. somebody like Skepta or, or Stormzy or yeah, whatever could come yeah. out and give them the realness because they needed like bits and pieces of it. Some so. people just ahead of their time. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in the time. <laughs> right? Bang That's on meant for time. me, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, I don't want people to be like, oh, he's underrated. <laughs> Fuck that, bro. <laughs> I'd rather people go, he ain't that good, but I'm rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, you know Kay's like on Forbes this. Yeah, he's shit though. I'm like, well, fuck. Hey, but he looks happy. <laughs> it's that age old thing, innit? Like I'd rather be unhappy in a Range Rover, innit, than um thingy. Yeah. 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 But whatever. Well, what do you what do you want to do, Marcus? I wanna be able to have the freedom to make a platform that everybody can contribute to. Like what you said, it takes a lot of wealth. It takes a lot of support yeah. to make something. I wanna build something that people can grow on. Because I think everybody's out for themselves and I'm not saying it's a bad thing yeah. but I don't think there's enough of a platform for people to come yeah. together and, and you, really you're, 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 I think you're similar to me you've got like a producer's head as well as like a talent head yeah. 100%, you know I mean? like, 100% I know you've got your label and stuff so he's like I just want to take all the world yeah, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I want to be I want to be in the conversation when the big companies will now it's the BBC or Netflix or whatever say we want to make some good shit who do we go to oh, mm-hmm. let's okay, go I to see, him because yeah. then that's a position of power so, when yeah. they want a partnership with if you're yeah. on that level, then you can green light. Do you know of course. what I mean? Of course. And Ofcom the other day said um, that Britain needs to come up with a, uh, an alternative to Netflix. There we mm. go. Because Britflix. 
Well, essentially, the, yeah, we like, do. We do. Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't have anything that's like British go. owned like that, like exactly. Netflix and whatever. No. Exactly. And I mean, uh, it's for, the the streaming um, thing is something that's get, like Netflix is on top now. Mm. But um, I it's, when I look at certain companies, a lot of these tech companies, they're already thinking 10, 20 years ahead. Oh, yeah. So, so um, whether they will be on top forever no. is a different story. Oh, in it. Like you look at somebody like Amazon, and Amazon's model is incredibly um, interesting because ma- a lot of people probably don't watch Amazon Prime right now, but they they've always been in the business of they will they don't mind losing money if it means that their product goes goes to the top. Mm. So. Um, they're killing it's it. It's exciting, man. Yeah. It's exciting, yeah. like yeah. what we can see, like because there's going to be like a lot more streaming platforms, and I think that's what the future is going to look like. I don't think there's going to be like TV channels as oh, as, no. as such. Like no. you have like you have like Netflix, and we're doing a live broadcast of this particular thing. I think the only thing's keeping TV alive in the traditional sense is sports. Sport, yeah, hundred yeah. percent sport. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you can't replicate that. No. And then until someone builds a time machine, and then you're fucked. We're just gonna watch future sports, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you can watch a time. Well, already you got like <laughs> esports, <laughs> innit? You yeah, know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. done a yeah, deal yeah, with yeah, like e- yep. you can watch FIFA. Yeah, on BT Sports. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, man, the world is is coming to an end, bro. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for the first esports Olympics. It's coming. It's gonna happen, bro. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Esports Olympics. Yeah, a whole multi a multitude of sporting games played. Will you play like overcooked surf and turf and? Shit, and you know who's getting gold? We get we getting gold, gold, silver, and bronze in Resident yeah. Evil. Yeah, <laughs> gold in Resident <laughs> Evil. That's just gonna be like, nah, bro, because because China are gonna find a way, <laughs> or Russia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're just gonna hook up their kids yeah. to Adderall. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just gonna be yeah. like, like just, there's gonna be some yeah. sort of. Dro- there's gonna be the Rus- Russian steroid inquiry, like yeah. why are they yeah, like, like, putting like, steroids into yeah, the joints of their fingers? Yeah, with some hench fingers, bro, like. Well, like it depends on the game. Six pack like, on yeah. their knuckles. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Depending on the game, like someone's got like a mad reflex on their yeah, thumb yeah. or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Like he's got thumb just thumb. moves. <laughs> his thumb just moves anyway. Like he's chatting to you. His thumb just moving. Oh my oh, gosh! Like, yeah, there's gonna be like lots of funny things in the future. Definitely. I think the future's exciting, but like for people that are very like technophobic, like if you if if yeah if you don't be excited in it because no. for you it's long. Yes, yeah, iRobot is so. coming. It's real. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, I've got to get this in though. We've got to keep it real. There's a question that we've asked many people to come on the show. I don't know if you're aware of this specific, but Frank knows it's coming. Um, and we just have to ask everyone to come uh, to the show. You've been pretty honest. Yeah. You mentioned um, pissing skid marks off a toilet. So yo, this is okay. how we get into that this. That was Kevin Bridges, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no you just, that, you just mentioned done it. that though. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you, you're, not, you're not aware of this, yeah? So imagine you've um, gone to the toilet and it's, you've had a good meal the night before. Mad. And you've dropped a big one, yeah? Okay. It's hit the sides on the way down. Sides of the... It's hit the sides of the toilet on the way down. Okay. Yeah? It's, a, it's one of those big ones, okay. yeah? Like ricochet. Ricochet. Oh. There's a lot of cleaning to do. God damn. It's time to wipe your ass. Yo. Do you stand up to wipe or sit down to wipe? <laughs> Well, Stay seated. I come from a Muslim family. Aha, uh-huh, okay. So Muslims actually use water. Right. Yeah, so I don't know if, you, if you've ever noticed that like, if any of your Muslim friends, they'll probably take a bottle of water with them into the toilet cubicle or whatever. Probably won't notice it, and you, but you will, you will now, like now that I've mentioned it. So if he goes it out the bottle, I'll be like, going for a piss. If he goes in the bottle, go, going for a shit, yeah? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, yeah, yeah. All right. So like, uh, in a lot of, like, that's why like, in a, if you go to a lot of Middle Eastern countries, they've got a little hose with a tap yeah, yeah. onto okay. it. So that's what you use to clean your bottom. And by the way, when you just use that to clean it, then you can just clean the sides as well. Oh, nice. So I'll be sitting down, innit? Yeah. So when you're out and about, do you, do you, do you go for the water thing so you go with a bottle of water? Yeah, sometimes I'll, 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 like, if, if, it, if I'm like, if I've got diarrhea or something, then not, innit? Like, because, like, <laughs> man can't. But, <laughs> but there'll be times, innit? There'll be times where I'll just buy a bottle of water and then I'll drink the water or whatever and I'll, ha- I'll keep the bottle with me in my bag just for, I'm like, if I. Just but that's case. how you know you've got older. I've got a bit about that as well, though. You start using public toilets when you're older, innit? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when, when, when I was young, are you mad? <laughs> Bust a shit outside of my house. Yeah. Never. Yeah. No? Fuck it, man. If you need to go, you need to go, bro. Like, it's sparkling water? Hey, yeah, that's quite good. The bubbles. Hey, he's got some I've never had got that, you know? I've, never, I've never experienced bubbles on my, on my bum before. That's how you know you made it. <laughs> I don't think that's something I really want to do, you know? Like, that's champagne. Bubble, that, that, gives a whole, that gives a whole different, that gives a whole different meaning to the word bubble butt. Like, okay. <laughs> 
bubble butt, bubble 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 butt. Uh, so is your answer to that? So do you, do you stay seated during that process? I stay seated in it. I okay. wash it, and then by that time the water's ricocheted down to the side of the floor, and it's cleaned it, innit? So, so you not only cleaned yourself, and you've cleaned. You've cleaned the well, that's what I'm saying. Environmentally friendly, my G's. And plus, toilet paper is disgusting. If you actually deep, like... It's recycled, isn't it? Yeah. 100%. Not even that, 100%, though, man. 100%. I get, not yeah, I get what you're that. going with this. Not even that, right? This is why I think, like, the Islamic way of cleaning your bum, like, this is why it's used in a lot of countries apart mm. from Europe. Mm. Europe, of, Europe and America are some disgusting fuckers, right? Yeah. Because, like, say... All right, say something, like, you get, like, a, bit, a little bit of crap on your, on, your, on your hand, right? Yeah. Like, it might even just be chocolate. <laughs> Right, whatever, right? Whatever. Say it's like chocolate or whatever. Yeah. Yeah? It's melt- melted in your hand, you got chocolate in it. If you just wipe your hand with yeah, a tissue, yeah. you, it don't feel clean, does no, of course it? Not. So why does your bum feel clean when shit's coming out? Uh, at, at, what, at what point? Because when you're a kid, yeah, they use so baby awesome. wipes, everything. To exactly. Like, at what point did someone say, yeah, you're old enough to have a shitty ass? Like, it, well, like, I don't said get that where that came from. They said from. That they can't flush them. That's what the argument was. They can't flush baby wipes. Mm. So that's why we don't use them. Yeah, but I don't care. Use water or I'll something. I'll be up, I'll be up for a little tap by the by the toilet. Yeah, that'd be on a summer's day when I've got to take a shower outside my house. Yeah. I just don't enjoy the day as much as I would have if I, I was. Yeah, and that's the thing, though. Yeah. And you just wiped your ass with like toilet paper. That's nasty, bro. In big summer, you you're in wireless walking around with a shitty that's ass. Good, yeah, man, that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> you had some fiber today, fam. <laughs> Fuck's got a two liter bottle. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? Those it's two sparkling liter bo- as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see those two liter bottles, yeah. People, people think you're a prick when you're holding them up, yeah. But they're like they cost like fifty p, you know. Yeah. yeah. And they'll charge you like like one pound twenty for like a normal bottle. So now I, I roll with the two liters as well. Mm. This is ten pound in the club. Jeez. So okay, where can we find you? Where does our listener go and look for more? If of you your type content? in at K A E K U R D on every platform, I'm there. I'm very good with brand synchronicity. Everything is cake. You know, there's some people. Well, I'm actually this on Instagram, <laughs> and then on my Twitter it's this, and my Facebook's this. That big yeah, man, like, yeah. just take take care of yourself, man. Please. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you pr- oh gosh, like, oh, and I think business cards might make a comeback, but that's not a different story. <laughs> oh no, do tell. Go on. I think that like. Nowadays, what do people ask you for? Your Instagram or your Twitter or whatever? What easier way to just have business cards to just yeah. show people that, like, or just be like, oh, boom, 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 follow me, follow mm. me, follow me, rather than tell people, ah, F U N K. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. hard. You just give them the, yeah. the business card and with, with your socials on it, mm-hmm. and it will um, it'll be much better. You don't need to have your telephone number and stuff. Some, if somebody gives me their telephone number now, I'm like, raw, like, you're, yeah. you're weird, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need like three different forms of communication before that. It's like it's too personal now. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah, I, I, like, like, if you, if you, it's like, it's like back in the day, like, you'd ask a girl for a number. Now, like, I think people just ask girls for their Instagram, innit? Yeah. Like, yeah. Insta- yeah. And then that right, way. Can I see your Instagram so I can see a total not version of you, please? That's yeah. what basically no, you're asking. Not, if you're asking to see anyone's Instagram, you're asking to see but they do the that because thing from who they are, male or female. If you turn out to be a, a, a prick, yeah, they could just block you. You can't block someone's on a, on a phone number, can you? Yeah, you, so, can, you can. You can. But you people can, just but don't do it. No, I mean, it's yeah. like if you're getting someone's house number. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that's if what someone delivers me the landline, <laughs> there's so many questions. Like, if you imagine, I d- I yo, babe, give me your number. 020. Like, <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? You <laughs> see, I, like, like, I, don't, I don't know who even uses a landline. No. You see when my landline goes off? I'm scared. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like what, who's, who's... I'll let it ring out. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't think I've picked up the landline in my house for about five years. Yeah, I think there's dust on mine. I, I was... <laughs> Legit, I think the only reason I have it is because it brought you have to get it for the bro- for the fast yeah, broadband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. If you like, like by the way, anybody that gets like br- broadband from like EE or Vodafone, like they wear bootcut jeans and they like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like they must like you're the kind of guy that's still sleeping with people that wear Mohicans in it. Like, <laughs> like, 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 like your crush has a septum piercing. That's the kind of person you are. <laughs> Go go go! Get some proper broadband, man. Like fucking like. Oh, my broadband's with Vodafone. <laughs> Best, dear. All right. On that note, bruv I gotta thank you for coming down to the nah, show. Thank okay? you, thank you for having me, man. Look forward to seeing some more comedy. Fun. Look forward to seeing a special as well, man. And yeah, having you hopefully. back on How to Kill an Hour. Done, no man's back. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to press subscribe and also give us a comment and five stars on the podcast app on your Apple phone five. because it's nice. And if you haven't got an Apple phone and you got an Android, you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, B. Facts. People asking me for the fucking Acast link. Shut up, man. <laughs> Is your podcast on Acast? No, it's on Apple Podcasts, 
and it's on probably Spotify and SoundCloud, innit? Anything else can go suck a dick, innit? Like, with your fucking italic text on Instagram, bro. Like, why, why is your text in italics, bro? <laughs> Why are your emojis like that? Yeah. For us all? You shit emojis, your emo- yeah. you know, they're crying emoji looks like it's in distress, you know? <laughs> all your emojis look like they grew up in care, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Plenty of ways to kill time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>